Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's talk about the uncertainty in measurement. Again, in physics, a lot of the numbers that we come up with to, in order to manipulate them, in order to come up with the correct answer in our problems, the numbers that were derived were usually measurements, and we have to talk about how accurately we can take those measurements. There's always going to be some uncertainty in the value that we write down. For example, let's say we have an object that we want to measure the length and the width of. We have a meter stick, and we put our meter stick next to the object and we're trying to figure out exactly how big that object is. Now let's say there's a meter stick, these are centimeters, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so forth. And you look at it, you try to eyeball it, and you try to figure out, well, where is that exact measurement? What's the best you can do? Notice we're not talking about an error in the measurement. Notice what I have up here, uncertainty is not the same as error. When you make an error, you simply make a mistake. You thought you read 50, but it was actually 60. That's an error, that's not an uncertainty. But when you sit there and you say, is it 54 centimeters, is it 55 centimeters, is it 56? I can't really tell because my eyesight isn't very good or the lighting conditions are bad or the ruler doesn't have very good markings or so forth. Then you have a certain amount of uncertainty in the measurement and you have to account for that when you take the actual measurement. You have to write down what you think the uncertainty is. Now, uncertainty is sometimes very poorly understood. Most of the time, people will look at this number right here and think, okay, whatever the smallest graduation is, let's say I have a meter stick, and the meter stick has graduations down to the nearest millimeter, whatever the smallest graduation is on the scale, they will then say, well, the uncertainty is plus or minus that smallest graduation. For example, they will write down, well, it looks like it's 54.6 centimeters, plus or minus 0.1 centimeter because that's the smallest graduation on the meter stick. But there's a lot of other reasons why you may not be very certain about the accuracy of this number. For example, how do you know that you're looking at it at the right angle? When you have a slight deviation from the angle that you look at, the number here can easily change to 54.8 or 54.4 or 54.2 depending upon how you look at it. The lighting conditions could be pretty bad and therefore you can look at it and you can't really tell that carefully. There may be some shadows there that make it hard to see. It could be that your eyesight isn't that good and therefore you're not quite sure what the, the line is. Is that the third line, the fourth line? You can't really tell. Sometimes it's simply a matter of you don't have a lot of experience at using the tool. Now a meter stick is a simple tool that most people know how to use, but there could be all kinds of other apparatus that you must be using and you may not be very familiar with it and so you're not quite sure how to do it quite correctly. Also what people ignore is you may have an, an uncertainty here and exact lining up the end of the of the ruler with the end of the object. There could be a certain amount of uncertainty here as well and you have to add this uncertainty with that uncertainty and all the other factors that come into play. So it could be, under the correct circumstances, that the best you can do is maybe to the nearest half a centimeter. And so therefore what you would write is you say, well, it's 54.5 centimeters plus or minus 0.5 centimeters. If the uncertainty is 0.5 centimeters, you definitely don't want to go too accurate here on that last decimal place here on, on the decimal place past the centimeter. You don't want to write it's 54.49 centimeters plus or minus 0.5 centimeters. You want to kind of line it up a little bit. So what this is really telling you is that you're not quite sure if it's 54.5, could have been 54.8, could have been 54.2, but what I do know that it's not bigger than 55 and it's not smaller than 54. This tells you that your measurement is somewhere between 54.0 centimeters and 55.0 centimeters. It's really somewhere between those two. I am almost 100% sure that the measurement is somewhere between here and that's indicated by this. So that you add this to this, it gives you 55. Subtract from this, gives you 54. You know that the range here indicates that is the certainty that you have that is somewhere between those two values. Now, other reasons why you may have uncertainty, let's say you're trying to measure the diameter of a particular uh, circle. And so if you take a, a measure apparatus like a, a ruler like this, so first of all, you have uncertainty of where exactly you're going to line it up at the edge. And then you're not quite sure if you're holding it just right. Are you measuring it at its widest as a diameter or are you actually cutting the line a little bit so that you're actually measuring something that's smaller than it actually is? It may be difficult to figure out where exactly the diameter of the circle is. So simply lining it up may be difficult. 
Or for example, let's say we're trying to read a liquid inside a graduated cylinder. Again, you may be looking, you're looking at there's a meniscus at the very end, you're trying to find out, line up where that bottom is, you're trying to line that just perfectly, you could be off, you could be a little bit above, a little bit below the line, and as you're being above or below the line, you may be looking at the wrong marking right there. Again, you may look at it and say, well, in, mill in milliliters, the amount of the volume in there, so you can say the volume is equal to, let's say, 18.2 milliliters, but you're not quite sure, you could be one or two graduations above or below, then you say, well, that's going to be plus or minus 0 0.2 milliliters, and this then becomes the uncertainty. What you're telling everybody is, when you made that measurement, that the volume is somewhere between the value of 18.4 milliliters and 18.0 milliliters, and that is the best you can do. You cannot be any more accurate than that, given the, the quality of the apparatus, your ability to read the scale, the lighting conditions, the shadows, the angles that you have, and all the other uncertainties creeping into the measurement, you must indicate that it's somewhere between those values. So, what do you do now when you have a number or a set of numbers that you measured and now you're trying to find the volume, you're trying to find the area, you're trying to find the density of something using values that have uncertainties in them? Well, we need to learn how to deal with those as well. So first of all, understand what uncertainties are. They're definitely not errors. And then in the next video, we're going to show you how to actually use numbers that have uncertainties with them to actually calculate the final values. You always, always have to take into account that the numbers you're using are not absolute correct numbers. They have a certain amount of range in it where you're not quite certain what the correct value was. And that's how we deal with uncertainties.